Welcome to the first episode, the initial episode of what we are calling Belly Left Leadership within the Youngstown City School District. My name is Jeremy Batchelor. I'm the proud superintendent of the Youngstown City School District. And for our initial episode, we have two of my favorite people who have my favorite job, the principals in the Youngstown City School District. The first have Mrs. Kelly Weeks. Uh, Mrs. Weeks is serving in her seventh year as principal of Vonnie Rogers. She also has been an elementary school teacher with four of those years in the Youngstown City School District. She holds a bachelor's degree in early childhood and elementary education, and then she holds a master's degree in secondary education from Grand Canyon. Her bachelor's degree is from Clarion University. Um, Kelly and her husband, Ron, are the proud parents of two children, Ava, 14, and Zachary, 12. And then we have Ms. Dr. Michael Seville, who is the director here at Shofen Career and Technical Center, where we are filming this from. Dr. Seville is here, the director, for the last six years. Prior to that, he worked at the Youngstown, I'm sorry, the Mahoney County Career and Technical Center um, as an administrator. He, prior to that, he was a principal in Rockford, Illinois. Dr. Seville earned his bachelor's degree in workforce and education and architecture from Southern Illinois in Carbondale. He has a master's degree in education leadership from Aurora University and a doctor of education from the George Williams College of Aurora University. He and his wife, Stephanie, are the proud parents of three girls, McKenna, Sydney, and Josephine. So welcome um, to Mrs. Weeks and Dr. Seville. Thank you for being on. Thank, Thank you. you. So you may be asking yourself, uh, Mr. Bachelor, Jeremy, what is, what is belly left leadership? So it is a philosophy and a mantra that we've developed. And I think it's apropos that the night or the morning after our great Super Bowl that we had last night, good game, no matter who you're rooting for, I think it was a good game. We are the belly left philosophy is derived from years of athletics, particularly football, based off of a simple play that required a lot of preparation, a lot of execution, a lot of planning and a true understanding of what everyone's role is. And so we have taken that philosophy and that mantra of understanding what our roles are, planning, having repetition and making sure that we're focusing on the right things and being prepared to do those things. And so we also say we're going to keep running it until they stop it. So that is the philosophy of belly left. So I want to just spend some time with some principals who I believe are running it until someone stops it and doing some great things for us. So Dr. Seville and Mr. Weeks, first question for you. In your eyes, what is leadership? What is your leadership philosophy in leading a school? Well, for me, leadership um, is is not one person. It's it's about um, everybody stepping in and being a leader. Um, even our students are leaders um, within the classroom and within the school building, um, and working together as a team. I think teamwork is a big part of leadership. Um, pulling strengths out of people and mm -hmm. and and stepping up where you're strong and 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 working together towards that common goal. That's cool. I love that. I love the fact that you. Make, make it known and make it plain that our students are leaders as well. And we need to develop that leadership within them. Um, and that's how true schools improvement happens. And also we're creating future citizens. So kudos. Sure. Yes. Yeah, it, it's one of the most important uh, duties we have as principals in a building to, um, you know, to have, um, be able to instill, um, especially in a situation with organizational change. Mm -hmm. um, those, those things really require um, being adaptive, uh, being flexible. And um, but again, this is I mean, we're 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 leading an organization. We're leading students, changing their lives, changing the lives of the staff also in their growth. So it's um, it, it's a critical part of what we do. Absolutely. Again, you mentioned uh, being adaptable, you know, being able to be flexible. I think we remember a couple of years ago, we all sat through and went to some leadership training where we all had to learn our leadership styles. But one of the things is also being able to understand your style and who you are and then being able to flex your style based on the situation that you're in. And that's key. Some people say, well, I've got to be me. I always got to be me. Well, if you always got to be you, sometimes you're not going to be able to lead the people that you need to lead or meet them where they are and help them build their, build their capacity. So that leadership flexibility is, is key. Right. So in Youngstown, we call our students scholars. What does that mean to you? 
What does that mean to you as a leader, as a principal, as a parent? What does that mean to you? I mean, to me, it's just about setting the purpose, right? Like setting the purpose for what we're doing. We're, we're, we're looking towards the future. And um, I believe that our scholars, our students need to know that they they can do anything that they want. And, mm-hmm. and that title to me just means set your goals high, go for it, you know? Okay. I think you, I think using that term is, is a mindset. It's a mindset mm-hmm. yeah. that, that you put yourself into that, into that mindset where you always have to see it as a positive thing, no matter what, it's always going to be a positive um, you know, vision that you have with using that term and whatever you do, when you use that term, it, it's always going to be from a positive lens. So it's important. Words matter. They do. Words matter. Words matter to how we think about ourselves, how we think about others. And so, I, you know, I'll just address it. You know, there have been some people that have said to me, well, why do you call your students student scholars? And they shouldn't be, you shouldn't use that term. Well, why not? <laughs> why not is all I'll say, and I'll leave it at that. All right. So what have been some of the effective ways you've used to build relationships with scholars and families? Um, time. Um, you, you have to put the work in. You have, to, you have to spend the time. You have to be a listener. Um, but I think spending the time going through the dialogue mm-hmm. because being a principal is a, a very busy job um, and and it can get away from you but you have to put the time in um, we have juniors and seniors here and it, i spend most of my time i think especially in this in the fall building relationships and building capacity with those juniors when they come in because that will take me through another two years with them right of mm-hmm. good experiences Absolutely. and you have to put the work in Agree. Absolutely. I think time is a big one. Understanding perspectives and, and, and having good communication too. You know, if one of my students doesn't understand why I'm asking somebody Mm -hmm. to do something or why we're doing things this way, same with our families, you know, um, it's going to be hard for the, for them to get on board. And so you just want to, that open line of communication, bringing up perspectives and then listening and really under trying to understand each other's perspectives. How do you foster a positive school culture and support both your employee and scholar success? So I'm going to kind of lead into that a little bit. We've, we've had the terminology and we've kind of had the philosophy, even the theme a couple of years ago, that culture trump strategy every day. Um, and we all know that we, we need to make sure that our scholars and our staff feel good. We just talked about the terminology. What have you guys done or what do you, you know, utilize to foster that positive school culture in your places? Um. For us, I mean, I, I think it's really about those relationships mm-hmm. and getting to know your staff and, and bringing each other together on a personal level. Um, and same with students. Like, I, I think it it starts with the staff and trickles down to the students um, For in my experience. And, you know, just really finding that general common love for one another and for our students and for what we do and looking to those positives every single day. I think from a staff point of view um, here at Schaffen, um, we offer a lot of autonomy. Our, our instructors have a lot of autonomy and flexibility, and we have to because we have 17 different programs. Mm-hmm. So there's different focuses and what they need. But um, but beyond that, it's the support. It's um, it's starting with a, a good, solid uh, core acad- or um, administrative team mm-hmm. and having them again, take the time to build relationships and listen and, and respond um, in a positive way to the staff. And, and honestly, it took, you know, a few years to get that rolling here. I mean, it, you know, we started off having a struggling uh, situation coming in, in from Mahoney County Current Tech Center, and we were outsiders looking in. So um, taking the time, understanding where they're coming from, supporting and showing, um, you know, a long-term commitment, started bringing the culture around. So you started leading into this already. And my next question is, uh, what are some examples of strategies that you've used to help your building grow into your program? And I'll start with you. You know, we've had many conversations and, you know, about on-demand jobs and, you know, what you're trying to build here and what we're trying to build for the district and the city. Like last week, you had the mayor over with a proclamation and he even spoke to the importance of what you do here into not only our school and our district, but to our entire city and valley. So, but how, do, how are you using strategies or what are you doing to really build 
Shoffman Korean Technical Center. You know, it starts with um, showing that it's possible to have wins. Mm -hmm. And so we celebrate every single win and we promote every single win, no matter how, how big or small it is. And when you do that, you build trust and you build, um, you know, a thirst for, for more and, and uh, success. And, and the teachers, I think, respond very well to that. Um, but at the end of the day, those, uh, you know, the report card and things that we were able to change over the past few years wasn't an accident. It was the work of the teachers getting that done. And when they see that, now it's, we're maintaining, you know, something great. And it was something great that the teachers built. So, um, you know, it, at that point, it's easy. It, it really is easy because you're maintaining um, great behaviors and, and, and a commitment to not just the school, but, you know, to the success of the kids that's reflected in those report cards. So it's fun. All right. So people might say, well, you know, that career technical center, we're dealing with our young people who are finding themselves and getting ready to go out into the world. Then I've got Mrs. Weeks here, elementary school principal, our foundation, our babies. Um, and we talk all the time about how Youngstown is going to become greater by making sure that we're great from beginning to end. And so that's why I really wanted both of you here today. Um, and so, and Mrs. Weeks, and she probably will get upset, but she is a superstar, rock star, elementary school principal. Uh, I tell people there's a special place in heaven for kindergarten teachers, and there's a special place in heaven for um, <laughs> elementary principals. I did one year in elementary. Um, I prefer high school, let's just say that, but I have a, a love and a respect and a passion. I love going into the elementary schools and talking with our youngsters and in the cafeteria and, and doing some special classes. But Mrs. Weeks has really taken and built something um, at Vaughn, and it has been a strategic plan and a strategic effort. So talk to us, Mrs. Weeks, about what you've done at Vaughn and what you, why you feel like you started to see the success that you've seen and where you're trying to go from there. Well, um, it's really been a process, like you said, like, mm -hmm. you know, every year we're, we're going in a little deeper and we're looking at different things. Um, but I, I, I view it as we are the foundation. There's no way you can succeed unless we're doing our job. There's no way the middle schools can succeed unless we're doing our job. Our responsibility to our students to give them that, that foundational educational experience and come out with the foundational skills they need to get to, to get to the higher level jobs and careers and college and everything. So um, it's a huge responsibility. And I really do see it, all of the work that we do um, as something you know, we're changing the lives and we're changing the outlook of our community and, the, and, and, and our town. And so it's a huge responsibility when you think about it. Um, but just one step in front of the other, you know, like just really trying to work on those foundational skills. We need solid readers. We need critical thinkers. We need mathematicians that, you know, um, so that when they get to middle school and high school, they are ready to go to the next level. And so that's, we just look at it and we keep a really close eye on the data and we support um, students wherever they come in. And same with teachers, like we, you know, and same with principals, like there are a lot of things that I needed a lot of support in to start, you know, and still do, you know, and same with our teachers. So it's about taking people where they are and building them from there. You know, we don't need to go anywhere else. We, we can, we can do this ourselves. Now you see why I had these two on today. Um, and, and I just, all I can do is concur and, and I'm, I'm proud. Um, you know, we've, we've, we've all, we, I was a principal in the district along with these folks and then I've had the opportunity to grow into this role. But I, I love how they focus in their laser focus on, or you, know, you both are laser focus. So we know we've had a lot of things that have come at us over the last six or seven years. And we still do. We've got a lot of plans. We got the 11 district plan. We got the academic improvement plan. Um, we've got our one plan. And we've tried to really be streamlined and making sure that all of those things align. And I do believe we've done the best job that we can do with that. Um, but having leaders who understand that while we have so many things coming at us, we have to focus. And so I, my first turnaround job in North Carolina, my, my superintendent told me, do what you do well and do it well. And from this seat is what I've tried to express to, to these individuals and their colleagues um, that we're moving away from compliance to coaching and support. Now, there's always going to be accountability. We know that. But I can't hold you accountable if I'm not giving you the support that you need um, and vice versa. So uh, I'm just excited and I'm proud. So I guess as we kind of move through, what advice would you give to aspiring leaders um, 
individuals who may want to grow into leadership roles, whether it be in school leadership or any type of leadership capacity. But I know our expertise is school leadership. What advice would you give? You have to love people and you have to, you know, have the ability to appreciate and respect different types of people. Mm -hmm. Not everyone's the same. You have to, you know, you really have to get to know people and, and you really have to bring out the strengths. Not everybody's made for every single role, but there's, there's plenty of room and lots of things to be experts in and, you know, leaning on one another and working towards those common goals. I mean, that's what I would say. Yeah, I think um, establishing a vision for yourself is from a, a leadership lens, you know, where do you aspire to be and work toward that because it is a process. And I think you have to honor the process when you go through that. And it's not going to be easy. It's, you know, you're going to have challenges all over the place. So um, I think the adaptability comes in there. Um, but respecting the process to know that you are going to have the ups, downs and everything in between and sure. just be resilient to it and, um, you know, turn negatives into positives whenever you possibly can and and just fight through. But eventually, you know, that leader will will realize their vision and if they stick to it. Okay. All right. Well, that's what, those are my questions for you guys. But before we kind of wrap things up, um, is there anything else that you guys want to tell us? Any shameless plugs you want to give about <laughs> jumping or about what you're doing at Vaughnie or any just last words of um, encouragement or advice that you want to give um, our listeners? Start with you, doctor. I'm always going to give a shameless <laughs> plug to the school that I love. Um, you know, again, six years I've been here and the, the things that our teachers and our uh, staff have created here from a physical point um, is, is incredible. And we're sitting in the space right now that, you know, that Mr. Naples uh, designed and built and over the past two months. So, I mean, th this is fun. So mm -hmm. I always have to give, um, you know, the plug out there. If you haven't been to Shoffin, please come in. I will give you a personal tour. I want to show what we have and show what we can do, uh, preferably with the students in in the uh, building, because I want to showcase what they do. Um, and I'm proud of it. Absolutely. And you should be. I will just say, I just recently took a tour of the building with the students with, with Dr. Seville, and it was, I, I didn't know we had so much to offer. It was, it was very eye-opening, and it was very impressive. So I, I concur, for sure. So I'll I mean, I, I can definitely concur as well. And I, you heard Mrs. Weeks say she's been here seven years, but this is really kind of just there's the first time she's been able to get over here, mm -hmm. kind of see all that we're doing. So we always talk about telling our own story, writing our own story. Um, and it's a continual growth process. Um, and now she, as an elementary principal, sees what our students or scholars have it waiting in front of them. And so now she can incorporate that into her conversations with parents and conversations with scholars when they're in kindergarten and first grade. Um, and that's powerful that we're building that continuum and understanding all that Youngstown has. I say this all the time. We're not where we want to be, but we sure aren't where we used to be. And I'm sitting in a studio that, you know, is beautiful, world class. I'm sitting there uh, working with our scholars who are producing this show along with their instructors. Dr. Seville, I want to give a special thank you because as soon as we brought this idea out, he was like, Say less. We got this. Um, and so him and the team began working on it. And I'm just very proud of what we have here, what we have to offer here in Youngstown. And while this is about leadership, because leadership is paramount in order for change to happen, this is really about showcasing what Youngstown is from a leadership perspective, because we do want to be a partner in the leadership and continued resurgence, as Mrs. Weeks said, not only our district, but our entire city and the entire Mahoney Valley. Uh, we know we want to do our part. So I just thank you guys both again for being the first inaugural visit uh, visitors on the episode. And again, continue to do the great work you're doing. So before we close out, just to recap, um, leadership is paramount. You need to be able to style flex. You need to be about people and loving people and being able to work with people. And then that belly left leadership. I will tell you in Youngstown, we want to keep running it until they stop it. This podcast is the property of Shofin Broadcasting and Youngstown City Schools. Shofin Audio and Video Broadcasting Studios recorded and produced this episode.